Hello, welcome to my channel. This is going to be a video about column buckling. We have a column. And this column is 50 feet long. So from this pin roller up at the top down to the center of that pin connection down below, we have a 50 feet length. Uh, we also have a cross section shown here. So essentially we're cutting through this orange plane and looking at that cross section. We have a hollow cylinder and we're given a diameter, an outer diameter, an outer diameter of 12 inches and a wall thickness of a quarter inch. All right, and we want to figure out what the critical buckling load is for this column. In other words, how much concentric compressive force can I put into the column before buckling initiates? And we know buckling is that limit state where a long slender member that is subjected to axial compression will buckle and curve as a result of its slenderness. There's a couple different formulations for um, critical buckling force, PCR, but for this example, I'm going to use this equation. I'm going to say that PCR is equal to pi squared EI over KL squared, and for a pin, pin column like this, we can use a value of k is equal to 1.0. And once we do that, this expression simplifies into pi squared ei over l squared. And you can use that equation for any column, provided that you're dealing with an idealized pin-pin connection. Okay. All right, so it looks like we need a moment of inertia to put here in the numerator. We need a modulus of elasticity and we need a length. The modulus of elasticity, we're gonna look up in a table. I think I forgot to write this down, but we're gonna assume that this is a steel column and the modulus of elasticity of steel is um, 29,000. KSI. It's usually written that way. Every now and then you'll see 29 MSI, like mega pounds per square inch, but it's a little more common to just see 29,000 KSI. All right. Well, let's do our moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. So there's our centroid. And you're always looking at the centroidal moments of inertia whenever you're doing stress analysis. Um, so there's our centroid right there right in the center of the circle. And we could do a moment of inertia about either axis, right? We could do it about the x-axis or the y-axis. You'll get the same thing, of course, because of all that symmetry. Um, we're going to need the formula for moment of inertia of a circle. And that is, I'll write it right over here, formula for moment of inertia of a circle about its centroid is equal to pi over four radius to the fourth. And um, I usually like to keep these equations in terms of the radii. Um, I don't know, it's just easier for me to memorize that way. And then I just kind of approach every problem this way. But if you did want to change this to diameter, just make sure you're remembering that a radius is equal to diameter divided by two. Now you've got that to the fourth power, right? So you're going to have two to the fourth power in the denominator, and then you're going to multiply that by four, okay? So just be sure that you're doing that conversion correctly if you'd like to do this in terms of the diameter instead of the radius. I'm going to stick with the radius. Okay, so let's keep the pi over four. And I've got a hollow circle. So all I'm going to do is take the moment of inertia of the outer circle, the solid, about its centroid. And then I'm going to deduct this void, this inner area. 
and deduct that moment of inertia about its own centroid. And so I could do something like this, outer radius to the fourth minus inner radius to the fourth power. Plug in. If my diameter, my outer diameter is 12, that means my outer radius is half of that. So that's going to be 6 to the fourth. And this is going to be in inches to the fourth. So I'm just going to save myself a little writing and put the inches to the fourth outside the bracket. Uh, my second term, my inner radius. So be surprised how many errors are made on some of these common geometry things. But we know that six inches is the outer radius, so center to that outer fiber. And I want to subtract or take out the thickness of the wall, not twice, but once. And so I now get 5.75 inches for the inner radius. Let's plug this in here. And um, to four sig figs, you can express this as 159.3 inches to the fourth. Now we're ready to plug into this equation. I'll do that in the white space over here. P critical equals pi squared, modulus of elasticity 29,000 kips per square inch. My moment of inertia up here in the numerator, 159.3 inches to the fourth, length to the fourth. And in the denominator, I need my length squared. Uh, but check out the units before you do that, right? I've got kips up here, units of force. And then I've got a bunch of length in inches. So I'm going to take this 50 foot length of my column and change that into inches by multiplying times 12. And I need that quantity squared. And those units are inches squared. All right, at this point, just kind of clean up your units a little bit and finish off the problem. Let's see, we've got inches squared, inches squared, inches to the fourth. That's looking pretty good. So it is calculator time. A little calculator trick here if you want to maybe find a slightly accelerated to punch this through. Just do pi divided by 50 divided by 12, quantity squared, multiplied by this, multiplied by that. That's the fastest way I can think of doing that. And your final answer here to three sig figs is going to be 107. Uh, excuse me, 127 kips or kilopounds of force, axial compressive force. Um, you don't need to put a sign with this, right? Everybody knows that when you're talking about a crit critical buckling load, we know that that's a compressive force. You don't need to put a negative sign or anything like that. If you want to be emphatic, right, this type of clarity is never a bad thing. So I'll just toss that in parentheses. And that is the answer to this problem. Thanks for tuning in today.